It's a wonderful day here today. Thank you for coming. It's uh, I know it's really hot. Um, thank you. It's a blessing to be here to this morning, uh, this afternoon. This right here is a show of uh, Korean people here, Korean Americans. You see all the state flags and the American flag here at the Capitol. You know, we may be different uh, in our opinion, but our similarities lies in standing against injustice. You know, we came to this great nation as refugees and immigrants, like many before us. We stand together as Korans to give voice for the cries of the suffering that cannot fend for themselves. We stand here as Americans today, <clears throat> different from our beliefs. Like the United States, we have strength in our diversity, and we stand as united Korans. Let us not forget that we have a voice because of this great nation, the United States of America. Let us be reminded by words long ago by Martin Luther King Jr. when he said, hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. And injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Although this month marks 50 years since Bobby Kennedy was taken from us, but I think it's important to focus on his ideals and the words that continue to inspire generations. As today's display of unity and strive for, for, uh, for progress, more of the words come to mind, and that is that word progress. Progress is a nice word, and change is its motivator, and change has its enemies. Again, we are Correct. We are Correct. In conclusion, we Korans must give thanks to the missionary over 200 years ago, and we also have to thank Adorian Judson as a missionary work and at those that follow. Many people in Burma are Christians today, but we also have to respect the fact that there are many religions. Our focus today is about human rights, freedom of religion, and standing together against injustice. In the book of Hebrews 11.1, 1, faith is confidence in what we hope for, and assurance about what we do not see. Not just as Christians, but as human beings. We must have faith in a peaceful outcome in Burma, as well as throughout the world. Thank you and God bless. We thank the Karen military for their sacrifice and service to the Karen people, even laying down their lives when they receive no monetary gain whatsoever. God bless you all. I thank you for standing as one. I first want to introduce Congressman Frank Wolf. We are honored because this congressman has a commitment to stand up against human rights violations. So much so that instead of just saying, that's good what you guys are doing, he says, I would like to come and share with everyone. Thank you, thank you very much. I'm glad to be here with Congressman Tony Hall from Ohio. Uh, President Ronald Reagan said that the words in the Declaration of Independence, all men are created equal and doubted by their creator were covenant not only with the people in Philadelphia in 1776, but were covenant with all the people of the world. We're, we're covenant with all the people who are being persecuted all over the world, including in Burma. We now see that the Karen, the Kachin, the Shan, the Rohingya are victims of ethnic cleansing, and it become more clear that this may very well be, it could very well be genocide. Today, I think that your solidarity could begin to make the movement where I think the following things should happen. And one, it is important that you advocate for all persecuted church groups within Burma. All groups should come together, together. All of you, every different group should work, to work together. Secondly, I believe that what is taking place in Burma today may very well be genocide. And I think it's important that you call on the Congress to put a resolution in and to hold hearings and to be able to document conclusively that this is genocide or ethnic cleansing. Thirdly, in order to punish those who are doing this in Burma, the Magnitsky Act should be applied to, to Burma. Unless things are dramatically changed in 30 or 60 days, sanctions will be reestablished on the Burma government because sanctions... <laughs> Again, work together, push the genocide resolution. Thank you very, very much. Next, I want to introduce 
an ambassador here to us today. And we thank you and pray for you for the work that you're involved in in standing up for people. As you know, uh, I don't have to tell you that the situation in Burma remains very dire, very dangerous, very troubling. We know that for decades the Burmese military has targeted religious and ethnic minorities. I'm just very impressed with your perseverance uh, to stand up for the Karim people and your family back home, but also to stand in solidarity with all groups that are being persecuted with Burma today. Your willingness to stand up for all is a witness to so many. But there are specific actions we can ask the government to take. One, we could unite all religious and ethnic groups within Burma and stand up for one another, like you're doing today. And second, we can call on all government, our government, to introduce a resolution condemning the genocide. And three, we can harness the power of the global Magnitsky Act to sanction military leaders who for decades have used their power to eliminate others different than them. And four, we can ask our government to reimpose sanctions on Burma if they show no willingness to end their campaign against the Karin, and the Kachin, and Shan, and Rohingya. Thank you for your courage in coming here today. By raising your voice for others, you're making a difference. Share your story. Advocate for your family. Together we can stand up to evil and shine a light into this darkness. A reporter asked Mother Teresa once, she said, don't you think that what you're doing is a drop in the bucket? And no, she said, what I do is a drop in the ocean. But if I didn't do it, it'd be one less drop. When I look around here, there's one heck of a lot of drops here. You put your drops together with all the people here, and you've really got something. This is powerful. Thank you, and God bless you.